Hey everybody, it's Chris from Prepared Mind 101. The last couple weeks have been kind of crazy for uh, knife reviewers, at least for me and the brands that I review, because there's been so much stuff coming out all at once, and some of which are knives that people were expecting me to do a review on as soon as it was released, and lo and behold, I'd already pretty much blown all my money on some of the other knives that I'd already done videos on. But this one in particular, I got a lot of messages about. So I moved some liquid assets around, which is a fancy way of saying I sold some stuff and got one so I could do this video. Now, fair warning, this is not a budget knife. I have a couple budget blades I'm getting ready to do. This is not one of them. This is a premium knife and it's one of the, you know, kind of like the Marauder 1, which I happen to be wearing today. Uh, this one's going to be upwards of 300 bucks, so it's not for everyone. So doesn't mean you got to buy it, but you know, at least check it out on video. These videos are important for people that are shopping for those kinds of knives to give them an opportunity to see is this the actual one that I want to spend my money on. That's why we do it. So this bad boy is the latest and greatest knife from the Phobos line, and this is the MK. B9. And you can see right off the bat where some of that price tag comes from because it comes with a pretty nice, pretty fancy leather sheath. If you had a leather crafter whip this thing up for you, it's probably going to cost you over a hundred bucks at least. But this one is interesting in that it is a large slab of CPM3V. But the handle is a much smaller handle than you usually see with the large knives. So this is going to be a first impressions vid, but yes, I am going to, I don't always uh, do use in these first impressions vid, but we're definitely going to take this thing for a spin today. So if you want to find out more about this one, don't go away. Okay, since this was kind of like unplanned, unexpected, and a late addition to the review game, uh, I went ahead, sold some stuff, I got the least expensive one I could find, and this is the black canvas micarta model, and it cost me $322. So I get that that's not going to be in everybody's budget. Just like the other Phobos knives, uh, this thing is really nice leather sheath. I've already uh, coated it with the Obanoff's leather oil. Now, one thing that I encountered with this particular sheath that sometimes you encounter it, sometimes you don't with sheaths that, because Bark River makes this, uh, makes these Phobos knives. And sometimes to get a really good secure retention strap, they're made intentionally short. So what you have to do is you have to soak the retention strap in hot water and stretch it and stretch it and stretch it until you get it around there and snap it and then you leave it sit overnight. And then it's going to be fine. Uh, mine was tougher than usual. Thank God for this rivet because I actually had to like tie a piece of paracord uh, to freaking pull that freaking thing. But I eventually did get it and now it is set up just right and I can snap it with no problem. But you gotta keep that in mind with these sheaths. You might encounter that and you might freak out and you might think, oh, that's too short. Now with the scout straps, the ferro rod loop, you know, I'm, I will probably take those off because my personal preference with large knives these days is I, I don't do the, you know, put everything but the kitchen sink on them anymore. Sorry, I lost my train of thought there because I noticed that I was running out of time on my memory card. Okay, so I think I was saying, you know, with my large knives, I tend to strip them down. So that's probably what I'm going to do with these because you can undo the uh, screws there and take these straps completely off. All right, I just uh, messaged Mike to get the key specs on this knife. So you've got an overall length of 14.5 inches. You've got a blade length of nine inches. You've got a blade thickness of a quarter inch. The blade steel 
the CPM 3V at 60 Rockwell and the total weight on this knife is 16 ounces nice slab of 3V uh, really nice grind aesthetics up here you've got uh, some some jimping back here but you can tell where the jimping's been polished a little bit so it's not like gonna really great into your thumb a little bit of a choil the handle feels to me like it's about the exact same handle you know I'd have to look at it again to be sure but it feels like it's the same as the Legion so what you're gonna have here is a forward heavy blade now reading right off the description on a DLT's website uh, this model's the heavy he hitter of the Phobos knives. It has a forward balance and is designed for heavy uses including chopping. The handle is the same design as the Phobos Legion and has all its hand friendly characteristics. So yes, it's the same handle but a bigger blade. And just to see right there that is forward weighted. Let's go up to the choil even when we're at the choil it's still forward weighted so we're gonna say see if we can get it here it's like the point of balance is just forward of the choil on this knife so this should be good for chopping should be good for batoning and big thing and it's going to be a lot stronger because it's CPM 3V whereas the other Phobos knives were CPM 154. I'm also going to be as we go out here and chop and stuff with this we're going to be using the factory edge. I have not messed with this edge at all whatsoever and the spine I'll test that feels like it's going to be fine for a ferret rod. All right try it out. One other thing as far as uh, giving you a visual demonstration of size I brought out two of my other favorite uh, large CPM 3V knives that would be familiar to most people so we've got the JX5 down here and then we have the Dark Timber OG Grizzly over here with the MKB9 in the middle. Alright before we get started I think it's only fair to point out that I'm a little distracted. So I watched Deadpool 2, 2 the other day. Now I've got shares. If I could turn back time, stuck in my head. So, uh, fun story time about that song. If you've ever seen the video, it's the one where uh, she's on the Navy ship. When they shot that video, my ship was actually docked right next to the Missouri, and nobody on that ship wanted to have anything to do with that friggin' video. They were all trying to hide. They were trying to get off the uh, get off the ship, and they eventually just closed the brow and forced everybody to go be in a share video. So that was kind of funny. Anyway, I go ahead and throw that music in there, but then I couldn't monetize. So let's do the first chop tests with this knife. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be going further back on the handle uh, just aft of the finger choil. You know, threw some more uh, ship terminology in there. So, I can say this much. So the first test with this doing the chopping is about what I expected when I got the knife in my hand. And that is the forward weight is fine, the geometry is fine. Obviously it chops great. The handle for me is a little bit on the thin side for a chopper. 
Now, it's, the handle feels great, especially for normal use, because you're not just going to chop with this knife. But if you are chopping, then you kind of want a little bit more purchase. Now, I came prepared for this because I wanted to experiment with something. And I know it's Bark River blasphemy in the group, but I want to, I do this with all my choppers, even my own. So I want to try and put a little uh, Wilson wrap on the, the last two thirds of this handle and see how that feels. Now, let me try this one more time before I do that. Just try and tighten this lanyard up just a bit and this is the typical lanyard if I do put a lanyard on a knife this is what I do and I use one of the sliding necklace knots and just a regular piece of paracord so let me take one more swing at this Blade chops phenomenally. My hand's slipping a little bit on the handle though. Now I understand that this is a personal preference thing, but I'm picky when it comes to chopping knives. So I wanted to test this out by just wrapping it with the Wilson tape. And I you know I can hear the comments already. Well, if you have to do that, then blah 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 blah. It's personal preference. Uh, like I said, I don't have to use that on the JX-5, but I do. Uh, it just, not only for comfort, but security. Because a lot of times I don't use lanyards, and when you're swinging up a, a big, super sharp piece of steel, that's just me. That's just my preference. So let me take another sh uh, shot at this using the wrap. That felt way better, felt way more secure. That's just me, the chopping knife thing. Now, that's if you're doing something like this. For most people, if you're just gonna be chopping like some small kindling or something like that, then you know, an unwrapped handle is fine. But if you're gonna be testing it out on something like this, just give me my honest opinion. So I, don't I don't sugarcoat everything. I'll tell you exactly what you can expect to experience if you're handling it yourself. But the geometry on this is really nice. And for something that's not a what I would call a heavy chopper, this thing chops pretty what pretty freaking nice now from this view right here you can kind of see the difference you know when it comes to confidence and comfort with a chopping knife when you've got a grippy handle you know I just felt a lot more secure chopping harder once I wrapped it than before And plus, if you have larger hands, you might consider uh, doing something like that anyway, just to bulk up that handle. Or you might just decide to choose something else. I mean, that is your prerogative. But I worry more about functionality than looks. So a lot of my heavy use knives do have this wrap. Now the second most important thing for having a knife that is this big in 3V whether people like it or not, is batoning. 3V can take it. And that's, so if we're gonna use this, this should be absolute, this should just be no problem whatsoever.
on this log. So I'm trying to be careful so I don't lose all my stuff down the riverbank. Yeah, like I just did. <laughs> yeah, piece of cake. I mean, you get baton with this thing all freaking day long. Let's see how this thing handles doing some finer stuff. Get this just right. I'm gonna go up and use that choil. It doesn't feel bad at all. It'll take me a minute to kind of get the the feel for it. This is my first time trying it, but the edge is great. This doesn't feel like it's gonna like wear me out. Obviously, it's not gonna be as comfortable as feather sticking with our ultralight Mora, but we wanna know exactly what all it can do. That feels pretty decent. I don't know that I would want to do it for a long period of time, but if I had to... Of course, I'm pretty used to Bark River convex edges, so... I think using, doing it with a big knife like this over time, if you're trying to do a really big feather stick it is going to cramp your hand up so let's go ahead and check the spine on this oh geez they, they up their spine game <laughs> yeah spine is awesome So absolutely no need to do anything whatsoever with the spine. Nice and sharp. That means it should be good for getting some fine fluff. Scraping bark or whatever you want to do with it. Is a little damp. That's the nice thing about the large ferro rods that I keep saying over and over and over and over and over again. This is even if your tinder material is a bit on the damp side, you can very quickly heat it up to combustion, you know, just by pumping away on one of these large ferro rods. So had my phone call and as expected. Uh, because I know he's got a lot of his his own ideas when it comes to designing knives. We design knives very differently. Uh, he wanted me to, the designer Eric wanted me to point out, you know, a key thing, and I went back and tried it. And yeah, there is kind of a, a noticeable difference, and that is the way you grip, where the way he intends you to grip these handles. See, he makes these his handles are slimmer than a lot of handles, and he does that for a very particular reason. See, most people would grip the knife like so, wrap their hands around it. He's like, you really should be gripping the knife right across the, you know, the callus line up here. So you're gonna be gripping it a little bit higher and then you're gonna wrap your fingers around it, especially if you're doing chopping. And he, he prefers doing a, like a three finger chop as well, right about there. And that's gonna drastically affect it. Just keep in mind, as I've said many times before, when it comes to knives, unless it's a, a heavy chopper knife, you know, like, like my knife is intended to be a heavy chopper knife, like totally replacing an axe. 
we're not generally going to be using knives to chop anything as big as what I was <laughs> like that that tree I was chopping on I, I just wouldn't do that but it's a good solid target which allows me to feel you know the geometry of the blade and how it bites and all that stuff so definitely uh, an interesting way of going about the handle and especially in just normal use when you're not chopping the handle is one of the more comfortable handles that I've found and I really do like it on the Legion but me personally even on my own when it comes to chopping knives it's just a personal preference I even wrap my own doesn't matter what kind of knife it is if I'm gonna chop with a knife I'm generally gonna wrap it because that's what feels better to me that's what feels more secure to me so I'm just trying to be as articulate as possible about my personal preferences personal uh, use biases so let's get back to this thing. Now one other thing he was ta uh, he talked to me about that I'm not going to test here, but when I come back and do a, uh, the more long-term follow-up review, I'll probably wait till I'm out in the woods and I got uh, Will with me because it's one of the things that he likes to test is this is intended to be really comfortable in use as a draw knife. You got plenty of room and just you know the way that it's angled gives it a little bit it's kind of hard for me to put into words but it's going to help with that slicing motion of using this as a draw knife okay well i of course you don't notice that from the video but i've been out here for about two hours playing with this knife just got it all cleaned up and i've definitely had some ups and downs as far as feeling this thing out for the first time and that's the tricky thing about doing a first impressions video is you get to see that process as it happens if I took this thing out for a month and that's all I did and I came and did a video on it I could make this thing look like the greatest knife in the freaking world but I like to encapsulate that first impressions experience that everybody's gonna have let's go through you know pros and cons pro Bark River built uh, lifetime warranty 3v excellent materials price includes a top tier leather sheath which is pretty freaking awesome so all in one package CPM 3v the spine is sharp so this thing rips ferro rods like nobody's business and it has the extra utility of scraping bark, uh, making fine fluff for tinder. Uh, the blade is long enough and actually made so it can be used as a draw knife. Uh, because it is thinner from spine to edge, uh, even though it's forward heavy, it still feels and handles like a smaller knife. I mean, you gotta keep in, keep in mind that in this case, the designer of the knife is coming from a combat knife uh, background and he has his own views and tastes when it comes to handles and sometimes you have to handle it the way he designed to get that full effect so yes you know gripping it back here makes a difference uh, the three finger grip makes a difference you know if you're just doing light normal use that Phobos Legion handle feels great Choil feels good. The jimping, I don't normally like jimping, but they did a really good job at rounding and smoothing that jimping so you get the benefits of jimping without it shredding your freaking fingers. I like it. Uh, I'm going to use it some more. This is going to be part of my permanent big knife collection, which I'll probably show off here shortly because I've been getting some questions about that. Um, yeah. There's a lot different about this knife, so it's going to definitely fit some people and not others. Uh, people that prefer the smaller handles. Uh, yeah, it's just, it's weird. You know, I'm not trying to find, you know, whenever I'm trying to get my thoughts down, people are like, oh, he's just trying to blow. No, I do, I don't do videos about stuff I don't like. But I'm trying to get all these, uh, all these thoughts down got some uh, 
can kind of see the, the contours goes in and out here with the handles yeah I think the biggest thing to just keep in mind with this with this knife is you know looking at the handle do you think this handle is going to be good for you do you have a Phobos Legion if you have a Phobos Legion then you know what the handle feels like so there's not going to be any surprises there but the geometry of the blade uh, when it comes to chopping did a great job on that down tree I mean the, the, the blade definitely bites I just don't normally use knives like this for chopping things that big in practical use. Testing, sure, because I want to see how it feels. In practical use, no, I'm not going to chop anything that big with a knife. So there's that. Uh, if you're interested in this, great. If not, well, you got to see it. Hopefully this thing helped you with your, with your decision process a little bit. So I'm going to have links to this in the description box below. If you want one from uh, Knife Ship Free and DLT Trading, as usual, I mean, that's who sells these knives. And uh, also, I'll put a link to the Phobos Facebook group because that's a good place uh, to go to get your questions answered uh, straight from the designer if you got anything else that I didn't cover. All right, guys, so there you go. That is my first impression, first use of the Phobos uh, MKB9. All right, Chris from Prepare My 101. Thanks for watching. Be sure to click like, share, and subscribe. Check all those links down below, and I'll be back with another video here soon. So see you then.